Peace and assalamu alaikum family. This is your brother Malcolm Flex TV. And I would like to thank you for watching parts one and two of our interview with our dear brother Demetri Muhammad on the Malcolm X story. Here is part three titled, But Didn't Y'all Kill Malcolm? by our dear brother Demetri Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Sir, yes, sir. So can you kind of give us um, a little view into your um, lecture today? Because I wasn't able to miss it, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure that it was it was it was fiery. It was filled with a lot of truth. And uh, we would just love to hear, you know. Yes, sir. Well, you know, with respect to the assassination of Malcolm X, our, our presentation today, you know, was adapted from a presentation we've done in, in various cities around the country called, But Didn't Y'all Kill Malcolm? Right. Because that's the question we always get. Right. But didn't y'all kill Malcolm? I hear what you're saying. I like what you're right, saying. Right, right. But I didn't y'all kill Malcolm? Right, right. You know? And so that's why I say this is an important uh, controversy among the young. Because I don't care what you say, you can tell them eat one meal a day. You can tell them the weed has been weaponized to make them gay. You can tell them, are the vaccines going to kill them? After you say everything you got to say, brother, their rebuttal is going to be, but yeah. hey, but then y'all kill Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> That's right. You know, so, so the, right. the, 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 the enemy has been so effective that he places this one lie into the consciousness of the youth such that they would be willing to throw away some of them, not all of them, all of the good that we try to share with them right. just because we killed Malcolm. So yeah. we take a Mythbusters approach to this subject and we begin by, by, by just deconstructing the arguments, you know. We go after the real reasons why Malcolm left. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we deal with the issue of his so-called epiphany in Mecca and seeing white Muslims, we deal with mm -hmm. the issue of the domestic life of the mm -hmm. Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right. which you have done a lot of good work on yes, as well, sir. and I salute Praise you on that. Uh, <coughs> we talk about, um, you know, how when he left in his Declaration of Independence in March of 1964, he says, I'm leaving to continue the work of the Honorable Elijah right. Muhammad. And it is a misnomer for people to conclude that Malcolm leads the nation because he disbelieves in the nation's teachings. Right. Very, very important right. point. Um, and so we were dealing with that today here at the Tubman Chavez Center. And uh, I think it's on Facebook Live. But we're going to continue this work, again, not out of a spirit of vilification mm -hmm. for Malcolm. Yeah, we talked about that. We, we love sure. Brother Malcolm. We disagree with uh, how his life ended. But, you know, when you begin to study and see the array of forces and circumstances surrounding the man, if you look at his hypocrisy against his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. I would say you would have to put an asterisk beside that because if there was ever a case for hypocrisy to have been manufactured and cultivated within a person, Malcolm X's case was such. Right. He was beset by problems in his personal life. He was beset by problems in his professional life. He had the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world spying on him mm -hmm. and seeking to sabotage him right. and to separate him from his teacher. Right. Because you have to remember, Malcolm X was deemed formidable and deemed a cause of concern because he was the best helper right. to Elijah Muhammad. Right. A lot yeah. of so-called Malcolmites don't want to acknowledge this. But long before there was Malcolm, there was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right. who had been in prison for teaching right. his people. And they try to minimize the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They try Muhammad. to minimize the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But he was the target. So it's like when you have an enemy force, if you can take out that enemy force's top general or best soldier, you have rendered a blow to that enemy force. Right. The soldier then becomes collateral damage in your ongoing war against your enemy force. Right. Elijah Muhammad was deemed an enemy force of the Jewish the leaders and the federal government. Right. And you'll see... 
some startling things in our research as a result as it relates to how the false charge of anti-Semitism played a major factor in Brother Malcolm's assassination. Oh, wow. So that was kind of what we, we just scratched the surface of it today. Right. Yes, sir. So why are the youth so attracted to Malcolm X? He's attracted. Right. Elijah Muhammad don't produce no junk, brother. Right. You know, I cited in one of my slides today how certain Christian leaders in the 90s, they were scurrying to try to come up with a un unified reaction to young people joining the Nation of Islam. And they wrote an article called Islam Has a Young Black Face. Mm. So Malcolm is attractive because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes us attractive. Even in How to Eat to Live, he says, if you eat the way I teach you to eat, it'll restore your beauty appearance. Mm -hmm. You know, He says that his teacher taught him that I, he would give us the kind of health and youthful appearance like we had when we were 16. This is the Islam of the future, the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. And it is attractive. It is appealing. It is intelligent. It is militant. It is masculine. It is feminine where mm -hmm. it needs to be. So this is the Islam that is designed to appeal to the nature of black people because Islam is our nature. Right. So there's nothing alarming that a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad would be magnetic. Right. Look at Minister Farrakhan. Right. Minister Farrakhan is extraordinarily magnetic. Right. In our slides today, we cited Professor Matthias Gardell in his book, In the Name of Elijah Muhammad, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. And he was just giving some of the actual facts of how Minister Farrakhan was selling out arenas all over the country, going all the way back to the 80s. And we, you know, we just made a point, you know, as the ADL and the Southern Poverty Law Center manipulate search engine algorithms, began right. to work with social media companies to bar Minister Farrakhan's right. presence. Right, I did a video on that. The minister was trending before trending was even a concept right. in, in, in the public sphere. Right. You know, he had, now you pause to appreciate this. Minister Farrakhan fills up arenas mm -hmm. like rock stars fill up arenas. Right. To teach a lecture. Right. No one does that. Right. Name a person, name a professor, an academic, name a preacher that yeah. tens of thousands of people come out to hear them preach. Nobody does that. So the minister and all of the students at Arm Belage Muhammad have a magnetism that really is evidence of a, a divine anointing from God. Right. A lot of people don't like to deal with spiritual things. But that's just the reality of we've always been a spiritual people. Right. And you cannot ignore when God anoints a man. And you can bear witness that it's God's anointing when you see a man do things that other people try to do, but the other people can't do it, and this man can't. Right. You know? And so certainly Malcolm is attractive. He was strong. He was articulate. He kept it 100. He was disciplined. He loved his people. And he was no coward. Right. So those are things that for people who have been afraid of our oppressor, for people who have not been too intelligent because we have been deliberately dumbed down, yeah. for people who have been under the foot of an evil enemy, mm -hmm. we long to embody what Malcolm embodied. Right. So he will forever be attracted. Assalamu alaikum family, this is your brother Malcolm Flex TV again, and I would like to thank you for tuning in and watching part three, and also please stay tuned for part four of our interview with our dear brother Demetrius Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum.